see that. Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check movie review. Again, my cohorts are nowhere to be found. Uh, but I must carry on. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and any other content that is posted onto the channel, we do have a Discord. We just launched it up. The link will be in the description box right here. You got it down there. Also, like, share, and subscribe. Join the madness. So this review, we are continuing on with our Carrie Career series. This one is Jim Carrey's third film ever. It's called Finders Keepers. It's based off a book that I can't remember off the top of my head. Edit Mike, here's the book name. Here is the picture. From what the synopsis told me online, it is three characters, because they changed their names at least four different times in the movie, each, are on a train to keep an eye on a coffin that contains $5 million stolen from an estate. That's pretty much what this movie is about. So when it comes to numbers, ratings, and money-wise, uh, there are no critic reviews of this film on our usual site that we base our ratings off of, sort of, Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, but there's an audience uh, score, which is 2.5 out of 10. There's also an IMDb score of 5.4 out of 10. Kind of spreads the ratio out. This film's budget was $7 million, but they box office back $1,467,396 doll hairs back. It's not, not a good one, but I'm assuming it's because either people didn't think it was funny, or it wasn't like the book at all. Now it's time to talk about the pros and the cons, because I have no comments on this film, really. It was just pretty straightforward. kind of want to go over the cons first. Um, the first con that I thought I didn't really like, I mean, mainly it was uncomfortable, was uh, the main character had a gun shoved up his ass. And uh, I didn't really like that for my own personal liking. Um, the transitions for the main character's um, flashbacks were a little weird. I'm kind of based it off him getting punched in the face and everything. I don't think I've ever had a flashback happen to me if I got punched in the face. Like, ever. The the, the kettle, the tea kettle. I wrote tea urn, but I meant tea kettle. Um, when the uh, conductor was talking to uh, the main character, I think his name is Michael. I mean, the main character's name is Michael. The actor's name is Michael. Ironic. My name is Michael. <laughs> but the tea kettle was, on, was glued on top of a container lid. When the conductor went to go open it to grab something, um, I knew they did that for a comedy effect, but I thought that was a little weird. Because normally, you know, when you put something on a flat surface and you lift that flat surface up to a completely 90 degree angle, it falls. Some of the sound bits seemed a little off, or I guess just off tone wise, I guess that's the word. I'm also trying to figure out how did Standish get back on the train when she was in the taxi. They never really explained that. And uh, how did the three main characters get from the moving house to the other train that almost hit the house? That is also kind of like making me scratch my head because Michael and Standish would have to hop from the house onto the side of the train and Sentry would have to hop from the vehicle moving the house either through the house or around the vehicle onto the side of the train and i feel like that would take more time than it should oh look krieger has emerged from his den he misses another movie um now the pros the movie definitely felt like it was in the right time period like it was released in 1984 it felt like an 80s movie even though it said in the beginning it was set in like mid 70s but it felt like an 80s film. When it comes to following Jim Carrey's career, uh, oh, hi, Bugs. This uh, one at least has a good storyline going for it, besides the last two films were basically blatant, like, sex movies that you probably saw on the cobweb-covered corner shelf of Blockbuster that's blocked off with a black curtain. This one actually had a story. It was actually entertaining. It was actually quite funny. Cringy at times because of the time period, but I actually really like this decent story going going on. The soundtrack was actually pretty lovely. Um, they used the same I get around track like twice in the beginning, and I was getting kind of worried they were going to use it again and again and again, but they didn't, and I was happy about that. Um, felt like the chemistry between the main characters were actually really, really good, and it felt very fluid. It felt natural. 
and I was actually surprised in this kind of film for a comedy that these characters actually blended well together because most comedy films and actors I feel like sometimes are a little off for the most part in a lot of comedy films but there's a couple that are actually good this one was actually great the pacing of this film was actually done very well it did not feel like this movie was a complete drag the film the film kept going at the normal like solid pace going on forward it didn't speed up or slow down really bad it just felt like a fluid a fluid river i can't think of words um yes that's another thing i would say comparing this to all in good taste and the sex and violence family hour uh the pacing and the chemistry and the storyline and the entertainment value that's my last prose greatly 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 improved in this film finders keepers to be honest uh besides for the fact that the film was actually funny i couldn't really pinpoint on a message besides um i guess fight for your goals even though i don't support robbery but i guess fight for your goals also there's no signs time there was a lot of uh i forgot it i i forgot a con completely and uh so there was this big like welcome sign like a an arch welcome sign going into a city and it was the part where the where michael was fighting the bad guy dude and i never really got the dude's name i think i did but i don't remember they're fighting in the the moving house and the top half of the house hit the welcome to vulcan or vulture uh arch sign and you would think that the arch would go with the top half of the house and just rip it completely off for comedic effect they decided to make the house go into cookie cutter mode and made a perfect square out of from underneath the arch which kind of hurt my brain a little bit there's no science the science dude's gone krieger's making food in the kitchen <laughs> ratings two ratings for this video of course the rating of the film and the jim carrey rating uh, I would say for the Jim Carrey performance for the 12 minutes that he's in this film because he plays like a, a nephew to the mayor who is, I guess, slightly not all there and whatnot. But um, for the little bit that he did, this was probably the most, if we don't count Sonic the Hedgehog 2 in our offset Jim Carrey series, going off his third film, this is probably the most acting chops I've seen him do. First is the first two films. This one actually was acting and it was actually quite well for the little bit that he had not that i'm saying that a six out of ten is bad oh but it's a that. huge improvement when you either do a host and jump around like this and then the next film you're just standing there holding your crotch that's a huge improvement so from a one or a zero out of ten up to a six is a is this to me now the film itself I haven't read the book that this is based off of, so I'm going off of that opinion. For an 80s comedy film, I actually really did enjoy it. And I would say that this gets a, uh, I would say 7 oh, out of 10. I'm right. probably rating it too high like I always do. But a 7 out of 10 is the number I'm coming with in my head. It was either that or it was going to be 6.9, and I'm trying to avoid the ha, nice joke. <laughs> I guess if you like 80, 80s comedy flicks, watch it. I mean, if you read the book, it, pro it probably is going to piss you off. Don't watch it. If you read the book, if you just want to watch a laugh, watch a laugh. Yes, you watch laughs. Uh, watch the movie. This has been a review off the rails, just like the train that they're on. This is Mike Check 95 signing out of this uh, train wreck of a review. We'll see you in the next Carrie Career series. Yeah. Would you like to add a bit before I close out? This is Krieger Margin 1 signing out. You weren't even in it, you fuck! <laughs>